Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome back to another episode of Season 3 of the Rule 34 Podcast. I'm your host, Jack, joined by my fellow co-host, Dominic Castillo. And joined by Um, our new co-host. Hello, I'm Giovanni. I'll be joining Jack and Dom from here on out. Thank you for having me. All right. Um, And just for a little context, Gio is uh, one of our friends from high school. And uh, as you heard, he joined in for the episode where we started talking about, you know, video games and stuff. And uh, kind of like, I guess you could say, the fall off of a bit. And he enjoyed his time, so he decided he wanted to join us on a more permanent basis. So we're looking to uh, enjoy having him as our new co-host. And... uh, Today's topic for today's episode even comes from him, but we'll get into that later. First off, I want to ask you two, how are you guys? I am doing pretty swell. Uh, I've applied for a new job, and I think I was finally accepted uh, at the the crypto arena here in downtown Los of the Angeles. Uh, it, it, It might be a good opportunity. I still have to see and experience it, how it will be. Uh, the position is uh, a runner position and also a desert cart attendant, which is like moving around between the suites in, within the, the arena, because funny enough, there are suites in there. Uh, but but yeah, that, that's uh, that's what's going on with me uh, for yep. the time being. Yes, yes, yes. That's great to hear, Dominic. Congrats. Gracias. Gracias. And if, funny enough, um, I think that's how we ended season two, right, Dom? Was we talked about how you were applying to that job, and we said mm-hmm. we'll see when season three rolls around if you get it. Yes, yes, yes. Thing. But uh, I know. Oh, real quickly, how uh, how have you been, Gio? Mm, I've been doing well. I've been kind of struggling with um what to do with my future and stuff, but overall, I'm pretty good. All right. And uh, Dom, real quickly, you brought up, you know, having to see the experience. Um, Today, as you can tell the listening audience by the time you're going to see this uploaded, recording the afternoon, we were going to record in the morning, but Dom got called in to open. And uh, upon hearing this, I wanted to just ask Dom quickly, what is the differences between opening and closing? Because usually Dom's on the closing shift of his job, not on the opening shift. Yes. uh, So... It, this is like my first time, uh, this whole time I've been working, this is my first time ever opening on my own. So no one else was with, with me. Uh, it was a bit nervous. I was a bit nervous because uh, sometimes, usually the day before, uh, usually when I clock out uh, like and finish you know, the day for the night and we close, sometimes we get reserve orders for like 10, 20, 30. Uh, you know, that one time we were, we were given like uh, what, 60, 70 pizzas during that one time. Uh, usually the night before, and usually I don't really have to worry about it, although I do like warn the co- uh, the workers coming in uh, for the next day to you know get prepared because there's a big order coming up. However, this time uh, th- there wasn't that many uh, pre-orders per se, so it was a pretty weird experience opening, but having to rush myself in order to like finish the pizzas. You know, you know, the first minutes I already clocked in and opened up the shop. Uh, but waking up like really early, I haven't woken up early in a long time. Uh, ever since, uh, yeah, back in uh, when we used to go in person back in high school, so I had to like fix up my sleep schedule a bit beforehand, so I didn't feel like you know really tired throughout uh, the day. But uh, yeah, closing. I mean, closing is basically is it's the same as opening, just in reverse. It's 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 um. It was pretty easy, I'll be honest. But it was the first time I've ever done it. Uh, I didn't mess anything up, thankfully. Uh, that's been, yeah, that's been pretty much it. Okay. I mean, thankfully, of course. Oh, my, uh, but uh, thankfully, of course, I didn't get like any huge order, like pre-orders uh, from the day before. Because I remember, I think it was like last week. Uh, we opened up shop at ten, and sometimes people want their orders around ten thirty, uh, ten like twenty, twenty, ten thirty, ten forty. But they ordered 20 to 30 pizzas. And mind you, uh, opening up shop takes time. And, you know, some people know at what time we open exactly. So they're already there at the door waiting to 
order. So it, you know, it's a it's a bit of a conflicting ordeal when trying to open, especially when there's pre-orders around. You know what's conflicting to me upon hearing that? Yes. Who is eating pizza? Nonetheless, ordering like 10, 20 pizzas at ten thirty in the morning. I could understand it, if it was leftovers from the day before, but who wakes up and the first thing they're going to eat is pizza? That sounds like New Yorkers to me. Uh, usually it happens uh, during special events because like, we know like the, some of the regulars there. And usually they have parties and stuff like that, so they just want to get pizzas out of the way. Cause, uh, or like, uh, I think it was during the Super Bowl. It was the during the Super Bowl and during last year's Thanksgiving, uh, where we got like huge pre-orders, and so people order pizzas out the wazoo with like ten, twenty, sometimes thirty or forty uh, pre-order pizzas that we have to do. Uh, I'm not sure why they order from the morning, considering it will probably get cold in the evening once yeah. you know. I'm assuming when the party starts, because I don't think parties start early in the morning, I think. Yeah, that's what I'm but, saying. Yeah. But you know yeah. what it also could be? Schools. What? Oh. Because think about it, you know, some schools, they'll have like a pizza Friday or whatever, you know, and they'll order from a pizza place, you know? So maybe that's True. probably what it is. Oh. Now that I'm thinking yeah, about it, that, that could be... Sense. Yeah, that can be a good logical answer. But uh, real quick, you know, also I want to ask you, um, I know you probably don't have as much experience opening as you do closing but which do you prefer uh personally i mean based off the what i did today i loved opening because uh i was able since i, I opened on my own we have a, like a small little speaker right and but it, it does it does like a lot of bass and a lot of treble and a lot of like sound so i just cranked that up to the max and i just play my my jammer as well while i'm just opening up it, but that's just my preference because closing uh, people can still order like it's like we order we close at 10 exactly at 10 p.m. and people still order oh you dumb alright uh, what was I saying yeah what was I saying oh yeah, yeah my bad my bad uh, so closing times we're forced to keep making pizzas at 9.55 9.50 regardless of the fact that we close at 10 so even in the middle of like cleaning and we're about to close, people are still able to order like dead last minute if they wanted to. And we're forced to stay there overtime. Uh, I believe we're still paid overtime, but it's still the same fixed price of 15, you know, minimum 15 uh, bucks the hour. So closing is much more difficult than opening because opening is, uh, I mean, it, 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 it mostly depends if, if it's dead, you know, if it's dead and there's no customers at nighttime and it's easy to close and if it's dead with no customers in the morning, it's easy to open. So it mostly depends on uh, what's going on in the in the same situation of there. The orders have to be done, the no orders, then it's an easy day. Nice, nice. That's good yes. to hear. And uh, before we get into today's topic, I just real quickly want to share with you guys some news that uh i don't know it just it makes me feel good it makes me feel like amped and stuff so um as you all know we have a tiktok page and i've been updating geo and dom on the way some of our posts have been doing but let me kind of give the backstory to it so we've had it for a bit but it's never been like a consistent thing because one during the time I was in school and making them takes about an hour out of the day. And if you're a college student, you know, an hour can be really vital to getting work done. So it was always kind of hard to take that one hour out of my day after an hour of recording, you know. So I didn't do it as much. And then also, like I explained to Dom, there was also a point in time where TikTok's algorithm wasn't pushing um, like, how would you say, uh, filmed videos in a sense like it had to be live recorded in the app in order for it to do good but i think that's changed now but so i like i told them i was like oh i wanted to test it out with um that video i did of mr solis and i talking about money in the bank and the clip i included was just oh you know dom was talking about how there was a moment in the wrestling where it seemed racially motivated like he said as a joke <laughs> and um uh, then i had to do one for um what, what did I do? Oh, I did one for our Thor Love and Thunder review. And then I did one for 
um, the episode that I do for the sports section, I was talking about um, something that happened in wrestling. And uh, I did like a whole like visual. So it's still on YouTube, surprisingly. I'm surprised no copyright has happened yet. But when I upload on TikTok, I split it into six parts because I was like, you know, it has a weird thing of despite allowing like 10 minute videos, um, videos split into parts do better. And so I uploaded them, you know, and I told them, hey, you know, uh, we, we know our biggest video, as I explained to Dom, was our Nintendo emulation one. It had like 900 something views. And then um the, the racially motivated one was getting popular. Like I was showing Dom, it had like, I think when I first showed you, I was like 500 views, right? Uh, I think so. Yeah. And keep in mind, this entire time, we've only had like four followers. So you ready to hear some updates on statistics, Dom? Dom, Dom. The Nintendo emulation video now has 1,089 views. The oh. racially motivated one has 1,295. Oh my. Part one of the game day video that I did has 2,033 Part 5 of that series has 2,281 views, and Part 6 has 1,318, and in two days, went from 4 followers to 21. That's something. I I thought it was pretty insane to see the growth, especially because um, I put those videos out on Monday and Tuesday, respectfully. I woke up on Wednesday to a ton of notifications on TikTok, and when I opened it up... That's when I just saw the videos all just completely blew up, in a sense. And I was genuinely shocked by it all. And every single day of yesterday and today, I just kept... Anytime I opened the app, there was always something, like a new notification. I'd go to check. It's people liking the videos. It's people, you know, viewing them. It's people commenting and stuff like that. And I was just like, wow, this is pretty crazy. Because, uh... The way I put it to my dad, I was like, I know a lot of people will see those numbers and be like, oh, that's not a lot, right? But to me, I'm right. thinking of it in the perspective of, think of it this way. Let's say one video only gets, like, only 50 people watched it, right? Sure, 50 wow. seems small in the grand scheme of things, right? But imagine being in a room with 50 people who all watched it. Seems a lot bigger now, right? So now imagine 2,000 people watching just a short clip from the podcast that's pretty crazy to me yeah it's like when you, when you told me about that stuff I couldn't help but like feeling good for you guys because I know you guys been at this for like what almost two years now mm-hmm. maybe a little bit more and like for you guys to like start seeing that progress kind of built up faster I don't know just like I can't help but feel like proud and happy for you guys because it really is impressive and Overall, it's just a very good thing to see happen. Yeah. Thank you, thank you. And you want to know what's, what, what's crazy, too? Is um, Gio, of course, you know, and like my dad, too, they both told me uh, they really enjoyed that. Uh, the visuals I put together for that one episode, it was only like six minutes for like a uh, part of the episode. That video on YouTube right now has like 25 views or something right now. And like my dad was telling me, like, that's that's way more than like a ton of the other videos ever get on YouTube, you know? It has 32 views. Oh, I, it's been, I checked it this morning and it had 25. Wow. Yeah. Yeah, so it's, it's pretty crazy to me. I mean, it just kind of shows what visuals can do. And that's why I wish one day we can, like, add visuals to what we're saying. But uh, got to get better at editing in order to do that. Or find someone to do it for us. Now that there's three of us, the, the odds increase from the previous of Dom and I trying to find someone. Yes. Because the way I did that one... Because it was only six minutes, I just screen recorded the audio and then edited that in iMovie. And yet people enjoyed it that much. And I was shocked by it because I was like, I made that in iMovie. It wasn't like I used some superb editing program. But it's not like I can screen record a whole like 45 minute episode, you know, and add visuals to everything we're saying. But it would still be pretty cool to do in the future. But yeah, that's looking too far ahead gotta focus on the now and just the next episode and speaking of all these statistics and numbers let's get straight into something that has a huge fan base that sees a bunch of videos get millions of views and stuff we're getting into the topic that uh 
Gio wanted Dom and I to delve into. It is the world of K-pop. Now, uh, Gio, do you want to kind of just start off a bit and kind of, kind of explain what was your thinking when uh, you presented the idea to us? Okay, so um, a few months ago, I saw that Jack started like kind of like getting into it. He was posting like some K-pop pictures, and he was asking for recommendations. But I just thought. That it would be like an interesting um, conversation to have um, between what he thought of K-pop before and what he thinks of it now. And Dom, being our guinea pig, was kind of forced into it too. So we, we sent him a playlist of certain songs and hopefully we'll be able to get a lot of interesting takes from him throughout this conversation so i guess mm, where do you guys want to start off because i know there's a lot of well, guess, aspects of k-pop that we could talk about I, I guess let's first get into dom you and i let's kind of share what is our so-called knowledge of k-pop before ever getting into it? uh well okay so we all know that there was Gangnam Style as the first ever most popular K-pop song to have risen into the Western media. That's the all I know way. pretty much. But uh, over the years, we've seen the rise and growth of, of Twice, uh, uh, BTS, uh, and there's, I'm pretty sure there's many others, but uh, those are the only two uh, names. Do, do they call them bands or groups? Uh, how should I call them? Not, mostly groups. Groups. Okay, okay, my bad, my bad. Uh, groups, these two groups, huge groups that have uh, risen, and I'm assuming they've pretty much gotten billions of views over the years. Uh, and that's, and seeing some visual, I've never, uh, before this, before the recommendation, I've never li listened to a, a whole song from beginning to end uh, in its entirety, nor a single album. But just watching based off like clips of what some people have shown me, uh, seeing, uh, telling me whether I might be interested or not, I, I, I mostly just saw like hyper visualized dancing. That, that's like the most simplistic way of saying a lot of visuals, uh, like eye candy type of stuff to get you like hooked up and attracted, especially with like the, the members, uh, and you know, with the dancing and stuff like that. But that, that's all I've ever, gotten as my first impressions before uh this if, if i if i say hmm interesting um from it's my oh continue continue oh no go ahead oh, i was gonna say from my like side of things like kind of what i've known about it is uh my first introduction to it actually was through geo getting into it but all i ever heard about like k-pop was uh Surprisingly, all I had ever heard about K-pop until Gio started presenting some of it to me was only about the fandom and more specifically like BTS and like how that fandom was apparently known for doxing people on Twitter. And um, also uh, the other stuff I know is that like the fandoms make like the fan cams, you know, like the edits of like videos of the members and their songs and stuff and how... Um, I just remember always constantly seeing them like posting it in like the replies on like Twitter or Instagram as a I don't, I don't know if you would say like as a meme but like you know they'd reply to someone like that and uh or like they'd randomly just comment it in places like that was the most I knew uh. you know and so like due to that it kind of built up like an image of like I guess you could say cringe in my mind. Cause like, that's all I knew was just the fan base. I never knew anything about the artists and the music they made aside from like hearing like how Dom said, maybe little clips, but never like full songs. And the clips I had heard, I was like, ah, this doesn't really sound like music for me. But, um, the way I got into it was Geo. The first ever song Geo showed me was called cry for me by twice. And I remember listening to it, and I was like, hey, that wasn't too bad. I actually liked that. That was a pretty good song. And then 
um that was all that was the only song i knew and he he showed me that song back in i want to say like either 2019 or 2020 one of those two years mm, i think it was late 2019 because that's when the song came out yeah and so it was like he showed me that then and like he said it wasn't until like last year like halfway through 2021 that i was like hey i heard um i heard the feels by twice and that's when oh. Gio told me, hey, listen to the full album, see what you think. That ended up being on my top 10 albums of 2021 list. I think it was even top three, if I remember my list correctly. And from there, I was like, hey, make me a playlist of more Twice music. And then he also made me one for another group called Dreamcatcher. And then my cousin got me into Stray Kids. And uh, another friend got me into like uh, another group. And I just started exploring the genre on my own from there. And so it's like, I've kind of now changed my, like, uh, visuals on it in the sense of, like, um, I think a lot of people go into the genre with, uh, with, like, I think it's common that people go into, like, the genre with, like, negative connotations or expectations of it. You know? Mm -hmm. I just want to say something real quick before we get canceled on Twitter. <laughs> Um, Cry For Me came out late 2020, not 2019. just want to correct myself. Anyways, and it's interesting that you said that you started exploring the genre, the genre by yourself. Well, actually, I should share my experience. So I got into K-pop in the summer of 2018, and the first song I listened to was Bam by Momoland. And at first, I was like, this is the only group I'm going to listen to because everything else is probably just cringy. Or like you know, I still had that perception of K-pop that it was cringy, and that it was it was something that I definitely shouldn't get into. But the more that I kept exploring, I in like a week I had like ten other groups in my playlist, and it just kind of like keeps building and building. And a lot of people that get into K-pop or like a specific K-pop group, they call it a rabbit hole because of how easy it is to just fall into it. And then once you're in, you're kind of stuck. So it was just... It, that's basically what K-pop is. Because a lot of people, when they get it, when they listen to their first K-pop song, they're, like, very surprised or even shocked because of, their, like, their expectations were just completely shattered. And then they just continue to exploring, to explore other groups or just that one group in some cases. And, I don't know, they just developed this, I guess, fascination for the genre. And, I don't know, it's pretty cool. I mean, it's like you said, Rabbit Hole. I have a whole playlist for K-pop songs now because of that. Earlier this... Was it early? Yeah, it was earlier this year. It's crazy, dude. It's crazy to think how much time is passing by so quickly. Um, mm -hmm. Gio was like, hey, Dreamcatcher's dropping an album. Give it a listen when it drops. And, literally, the first thing that I told him was, I've never heard music like this before. It was, like, so unique to me. But uh, mm. the main thing I, I do want to highlight before we start getting to the actual music that he showed us, the music videos, all the details about it, was uh, I think another thing people, like, kind of need to realize is that at the end of the day, this is just, this genre of music is just another country's version of music. K-pop is just Korea's version of pop music, you know, or, like, you know, uh, people in, like, the UK, you know, they they have it called, like, UK rap. You know, that's just the, the United Kingdom's version of rap music. You know, it's like people kind of have, like, these, uh, these views of it. And it's just, like, I can understand where they come from because, you know, it's not like everyone's going to like every genre of music or every song that they hear. But, like, I don't know, people have this weird thing where it's, like, if it, I guess you could say if it's, like, if it's not in English, they don't consider it, like, I don't know, music, I guess you could say, but it's like, like I said, this is just another country's version of it. And because mm -hmm. it's another country's version, you shouldn't expect it to just be in a language you understand. Cause like, that's another thing is people kind of look at it as a foreign concept. Cause it is a foreign concept. It's from a different country in a different language, you know? And it's like, mm -hmm. I think people should kind of get past that. Cause I mean, I, there, there, you want to talk about rabbit holes and whole, like, Dedi like the dedication of these fan bases there are a there's a whole side of youtube that gives you the 
what is like it, it, it gives you the song lyrics in English in whatever language is sung in, you know, Japanese, Korean, you know, and then even like a, I forget what the other one is. It, is it like a Romanji or something like that? I think it's mm, like it's that. a Roman. They basically got like the Korean and then they like it's called Romanizing it. So it's basically just like dividing all the Hangul the Korean into what it would be if it were in ink, like in like traditional what's the thing yeah um basically like english letters basically yeah that's so what, like that's what they do yeah there's like a whole side of that to like translate the music for you you know like almost any song you can find or like search up it's like they there's like some set of music of that and then here's another crazy thing dom because like we yes. mentioned it's groups and there's like multiple members in a ton of these groups they'll even split it up and highlight who's singing what part because you know how there's going to really? be multiple people singing? They will show yeah. you. At, like, even if it's just for, like, one word in, like, a line of lyrics, they will show you who is singing what exact part, you know, and all that. It's like, they th- these people are so dedicated that they, they simplify it down for you, you know. They, they give you the lyrics. They show you who's singing it. They show you what exactly it's translating to. And a lot of times, it's super accurate to what they're saying, you know. Right. So, I just think that's, that's like, a going back to the whole thing about you know because it's like a foreign concept it's like i don't know i think it's time to like move past that like ideology because i mean you you both know me and geo especially knows me because compared to everyone else i'm the most like open when it came to like you know listening to music like i obviously you know i'm not gonna cap here okay i'm not gonna cap and act like i i didn't as well but you know I, I joined in a couple of times on the roast for Geo, but it's like now looking back at it, I'm just like, man, it was so messed up that I did that because look at me now. But, you know, it's it's like I'm more open to music. And so when Geo came to me wanting me to listen to it, it's like I was more I was more than willing because I'm always trying to find new music. My playlist is like 2,400 songs or something like that. I'm constantly trying to expand it because I... I it was a goal of mine to reach 2,000, and now it's a goal of mine to reach 3,000, if I can even have the space for that. I think it's fair to say that if you're a fan of music like Jack, and you have like these huge playlists and just you just love exploring music, you should definitely give K-pop a chance. It's okay if you don't like it, but the music that these companies produce is honestly some of the best I've ever heard. And I'm heavy, like, this is heavily biased, but I'm still going to say it's some of the best music I've ever heard. It's, like, different, but kind, of, but still the same. And it is, I don't know, it's worth giving a listen to. And so, let's get straight into that, about the, the music that Gio presented in a playlist to Dom and I. It was six, seven songs. And he wanted us to kind of just analyze, you know, what we thought of the music itself the music videos and what they were showing kind of like you know get us get a look of comparing what like uh what the the other like the eastern side i guess you could say of the world but mainly like you know when it comes to the genre of k-pop what they do differently in terms of like western music you know but so yeah. for the playlist just for our, so that our, lis- our listeners know i tried to get uh, like as like as diverse as of a selection as possible so i went with like the big names like twice straight kids but i also chose like some up and coming like dreamcatcher and this new group that came out this year called classy so basically it's like very diverse in the selection so it's not like we're just focusing on the big names we're seeing like all the aspects of k-pop at different levels and another thing, especially um, he he, we're gonna talk about this when we get into the twice ones. Gio wanted to kind of show the difference in like I guess you could say like eras or time periods of the genre when looking at the sound of the music and even like the visuals of like the music videos, you know. But uh, we'll start off with you, Dom, because I feel like Gio and I have taken over this episode from. You. What were what are what are some of your thoughts on the music you heard, the visuals you saw, the differences between, you know when you're watching like a western music uh like a western like when it comes to the western side of music their music videos their sound that they use and all that you know 
enlighten us on what you thought. Okay. Okay. So uh, going in with the first song, Everglow, uh, I didn't expect to see as much as the visuals, vi- visuals uh, that I was originally thinking. And going into Everglow, the choreography was okay. I liked it. I, I love the choreography. The, the dancing was nice. Uh, it was all fluid movements. Uh, comparing it to like Western stuff, uh, I don't feel like there's that much of a difference. Uh, the choreography of like the dancers, the background, uh, the background, the background dancers, and the main, uh, uh, the main artists, uh, it, it seemed very nice. It was fluid. It was nice between Western and uh, uh, Korea. It, it, not much of a difference. Uh, the visuals, however, that is something in it of itself. It's something crazy. Uh, the fluid transitions between different scenes. That's what only confuses me a little bit because I just feel like it kind of over exaggerates the visuals a bit. I understand it's trying to tell a story, uh, but it's just I would just say it, to me it's a bit too much. I, I prefer like a simplistic uh, storytelling in terms of visuals, but for Everglow, uh, I understand that it is pop music. It's meant to be. You know, to alleviate feelings and you know, make to feel make you to feel good or or excited. I just feel like it's just too much, and I'm not really sure how it's meant to be enjoyed. If that makes sense, like, am I supposed to be hearing this while on the train, on the bus, walking outside, on a road trip, uh, on a hiking trip? Uh, I'm not sure how specifically for everyone. Like, how is one? Let me ask you this, Gio. Ha, ha. To this this song specifically, and songs like this where it, it is constant, you know, rhythm, 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 constant, you know, uh, constant highs per se. How's one meant to enjoy this sort of K-pop type beat? I think honestly, it's very, it's very interesting because me personally, first by Everglow that music video is my favorite of all time and I honestly have no problem saying it's one of the best ever produced so um, but for like the music aspect of it like you said it's kind of like any other genre really like there's like some like there's like R&B that's kind of like you know chill and then there's like heavy metal that's like very intense there's just kind of like whenever you need something that'll give you a little bit more energy like when you're working out or you know whatever you could just put on some like something that's a little bit more energetic and enjoy it and um, it's, it's basically like that there's not like like the uh, 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 like rules you have to follow it's whatever you feel like listening to at the time and what i found interesting in what you said because i've i've analyzed that video so much is the transitions what do you like? Do you mean like the visual transitions and like from one shot to another, or are you, are you talking about like the, like more musically, like the instruments? Uh, uh, I'm talking about the the scenes, like from like uh, n- not like the camera movements within the same like location, but once it moves to a whole different location, like the and they were in a whole different yeah backgrounds, and them like instantly just changing clothes. Uh, for whatever reason, like uh, I, I don't. I understand the story that's going on, but I just like it's it's a whole different scene with it's the same people with just different clothing, uh, and it's just like I'm pretty sure that one scene, uh, we, we see the background dancers uh, as like black ninjas, like in black clothing, and I think the next now they're all in white robes and stuff like that. If I'm not incorrect. Mm-hmm. So real quickly, Dom. Mm-hmm. Sorry, I want to. Yes. Can I can I ask you something? Because it's something. It's a point I made with um about like after watching like all the music videos. Is the point you're making, or I know what point you're making, but I also want to ask this as a way of maybe like maybe it kind of also clarifies something. Are you also kind of thinking in the manner I am of some of these music videos didn't necessarily. Um, match up or fit the the picture you had in your mind when listening to the song. 
Because there's a couple of music videos in here where I watched them. And my kind of first general reaction to the music video itself was, I don't know if that's necessarily the scene I imagined when I heard this song. Kind um, of. Uh, there, there was a little bit of... I mean, not, not really. There was a bit of a separation between like the choreogra- uh, the choreog- uh, the dances the intensity of the dances and the background of what's going on with the dances along with the music. There was a bit of a separation between the two. So my first impression was like, okay, uh, I I would assume the music is not too intense. So I'm assuming the dancing is not going to be intense as well. But sometimes the dancing and the background would be a bit over the top compared to the music. I'm not sure if I'm making sense here. Mm, I guess I wouldn't say that for first because so that entire like MV is just energy. So yeah, you, you, you can't really like the whole the song itself is very energetic. There's just like maybe like one drop during the bridge where it kind of gets like you know kind of like slower. But like the whole entire point of that song is to be like a very hype, energetic song. So the dancing is intense, and I think the whole. Um, the point that you're making, I would like to say that if you're, like, used to, like, Western NVs, then, like, K-pop NVs are going to be, like, very surprising to you. Because in Western NVs, it's kind of like you have the artist and, like, the scenery changes around them, but the artist itself, themselves, are not actually doing anything that's very intense. Like, in rap music, it's just kind of like the rapper being like, yo, I'm cool. Or whatever. Oh, but in like K-pop, in, in K-pop, it's more like they they do like the music video, but they put they have to put the performance in the music video too to hook the whoever is watching them because right to stand out basically. Right. So so basically, it's just a pursuit of perfection, no matter what. Yeah, because the K-pop industry is very competitive, and oh. uh, it's not like in. This is kind of like a hot take, but in like Western audiences aren't as strict with the artist as like um, Korean, the Korean audiences, I guess. Because if you like in Korea, if an artist kind of like has a bad release or has like a scandal and like or whatever, they kind of like fall hard and they have to like work their way back up and... Um, one of the artists that you actually listened to, or that I included in the playlist, B.I., had uh, maybe like three, four years ago, had a huge drug scandal. And he he literally lost everything. And he's like just now working his way back up. So it's like they have to keep like this. We have to keep going. We have to keep going. We have to like reach a new level so we could stay relevant to the audience. And that's like kind of like the, the the main reason why um, these music videos are so like intense and like have so many different um, sets, basically. Right. So that's that's like just like what it is. Interesting. Interesting. So yeah, it's interesting. Um, as far as like my thoughts on like um specifically the everglow video i did like a lot of uh the visuals of it at some point like uh i think one of my favorite parts of like uh when it when it came to the effects was um the i guess there's no other way to describe it like the finger sparks you know like when the they had like the like uh i, I forget at what point it was like near the beginning that's all i remember uh about yeah. it was that it was near the beginning they had this part um, where, like, uh, it was, like, sparks coming out of their fingers. And, like, usually you would think, like, um, like the visual editing would kind of, like, uh, I don't know. Maybe just because it's, like, I'm used to uh, a lot of times in the Western media section. It's, like, you either get super high-budget music video or you get, like, you know, not, not to be, like, mean, but, like, low-budget in the sense of, like, you can tell which one had the higher-budget, more overproduced music video you know 
But this one is like a lot of the visuals in it weren't like awkward in a sense, you know, like a lot of the times it didn't seem out of place or like awkwardly edited, you know, they were just like really well kind of placed, you know, where it's like when it happened, it looked. It, it like it looked good like it like the parts were um they they also there's some like parts with lightning and like it doesn't look out of place when they do it you know like it, it isn't something that you can look at and visually tell that like uh it's like uh either like down to poor editing or low budget you know mm-hmm. like when it comes to this mm-hmm. stuff it like it really seems like a ton of like money gets put into the production of these videos yeah, and it's very interesting um, because Everglow isn't like a big group, and the company that they come from isn't like big either. So, like for them to produce an, a music video like First with their budget is actually insane. Yeah, and um, one thing I definitely want to see more of, and obviously that's up to us to like do more exploration into in terms of Domini. Because uh, Dom kind of brought it up, and it's something I do too. Obviously, these videos do have stories, but like a lot of the focus is on the choreography and the performance, like you mentioned. I want to. I I definitely after watching these different music videos, I definitely want to s- get into the the storytelling side of a uh, music videos. You know. Mm, I think. Well, this is, like, something we could talk about after the podcast is over, but there's, like, a lot of groups that have, like, very story-heavy music videos. Like, every single music video that they release is connected to the previous one. But Everglow, in terms of story, they have a story, but it's not, like, um, like the main focus of it. Yeah. So, yeah. Because, yeah, you know, especially when it comes to the Western side, you obviously get, like, a... Well, the Western side is kind of split 50-50. When, they, when an artist releases a music video, it's like Gio said, it's either like, you know, a performance where, you know, kind of like these, these K-pop videos, a sample we got, it's like a, about the performance. It's almost like a, the music video is like, like what you would see like at a concert from the artist, you know, where it's just them, maybe they have a background set, but it's just kind of them performing the song. And then there's other ones that do like full-fledged stories, even full-fledged, uh, interconnecting stories i know dom i brought up to you at the start of the year that um the weekend his previous album and all that and all of the music videos there told a story and are now connecting to his album and the music video he's dropping for this album and potentially the next one you know like that's a that's obviously like an extreme level of storytelling when it comes to music videos but that's definitely an area i'd want to see more of especially because uh uh, I know my dad's going to tell me for sure to make this a future episode, but there's a rock band out there called Starset. And they have a real sci-fi um, feel to their music and their music videos. And, uh, you know, so they have a lot of, like, story-based uh, music videos. A lot of them really match what my dad imagines when he listens to their music because that's another thing me and him are kind of big on is we, we're very imaginative, imaginative. So it's like when we hear a song... Both of us can kind of come up with a, like, picture in our mind of, like, what we're imagining while this is playing. Like, my dad, anytime he hears Star Set, he's like, I can just imagine some big old sci-fi either series or movie playing out. So I would yeah. definitely like to get into uh, the story building of it all or the storytelling. But uh, with 30 seconds left, I just want to real quickly say we are doing a part two after this episode. So if you're enjoying the discussion here, tune into part two. We're going to get into the rest of the music videos, get into more about the visuals, the choreography, the music itself, and uh, we just hope you'll join us. But thank you for joining for this episode of Season 3. Tune in to the next episode.